Welcome to an introduction to the colouring group. Now, um, so far in the course, we're used to invariants whose values are numbers. For example, the linking number of an oriented link, that's an integer. And the determinant of a link, that's uh, a non-negative integer. Um, now we're going to make another invariant whose values are going to be groups instead. We're going to take a link and cook up what's called its colouring group. And it really uses the same ideas, colouring equations, labels, and so on, that we've had so far, but it uh, uses them in quite a clever way to create a much, again, much more useful invariant. So here's how we go. This is the definition. Uh, definition 4.1 from the notes. The colouring group of L, and we write it col L, that's the abelian group, so it's abelian, obtained by choosing a diagram. As usual, we're choosing a diagram. And then we define that the colouring group of L is the following thing. I'll, I'll read out this symbol here, this right-hand side, as a sentence. It's the abelian group generated by A, B, C, and so on, subject to the relations. Uh, let me start again. It's the abelian group generated by A, B, C, and so on subject to the relations a plus b minus 2c equals 0, and so on, and a single relation a0 equals 0. Now, what is going on? What are these a, b, c's? Well, they are the arcs of the diagram. What are these a plus b minus 2c equals 0? These are the colouring equations. Actually, it applies to the whole, all the dots as well. Those are the rest of the coloring equations. So let me draw the brace like that. And what is a0 equals 0? That's the chosen arc, right? Remember, we always said when we were coloring that we could choose some arc to have color 0. Well, uh, this is the corresponding thing here. So we choose one of the arcs and set it equal to 0. Now, that's what the things inside the symbol are. But what does the symbol itself mean? Well, altogether, what it means is that uh, these are the generators of our abelian group, and these are the relations. In other words, an element of the abelian group is uh, a linear sum with integer coefficients of these symbols. And two of those sums of these symbols are equal if their difference is uh, a sum of these relations. The left-hand sides of these relations. You see the right-hand sides are all zero. OK, so rather than me continuing to talk, let's do an example. On the right-hand side of the screen, there's a, there's a rule down the bottom on the left-hand side. We'll come back to that shortly. But here's an example. We're going to look at the figure 8, and we're going to show that its colouring group is the integers modulo 5. This is the, this is the abelian group of integers mod 5. In other words, it's the cyclic group of order 5. So let's work out the colouring group according to the rules. Uh, well, we, f we choose a diagram, and we let the generators be the arcs. So let me name all the arcs. Uh, let's call them x0 whoops, x0, x1, x2, and x3. And then the generators are x0, x1, x2, x3. And now, what are the relations? Well, we need to write in the colouring equations, all of them, that is to say, one for each crossing. So let's name the crossings 0, 1, 2, 3. And then what are the colouring equations? Well, the colouring equation at 0, that's x0 plus x3 minus 2x2 equals 0. What's the colouring equation at 1? That's x1 plus x2 minus 2x0. Uh, what about 2? x2 plus x3 minus 2x1. Uh, 
and at 3 it's x1 plus x, x0 plus x1 minus 2x3. Right, uh, so that was the colouring equations and then we need to uh, put in the equation for our chosen arc, so let's choose x0, x0 equals 0. There we are. So that's our presentation of our colouring group. Now, um, there's a rule we're going to use that's helpful for us. It's down here on the bottom left. Suppose you have a relation of the form generator equals something, and the something in question cannot involve the generator in question, but only the other generators. So not involving the chosen generator. Well, if you have such a relation, then you can substitute the right-hand side of the relation into all the others. So you can substitute the right-hand side into the other relations. You can delete this relation, and you can delete the generator. Excuse me, that's my first on tape sneeze, I believe. Uh, okay, so can we do that on the right hand side? Well, yeah, let's look at this relation here. It's of the form some generator x0 equals some right hand side, in this case, 0. So what we can do is we can substitute this expression into all the other relations, and then we can erase the given relation and we can erase x0. So let me show you what happens if I do that. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to substitute x0 equals 0 into all the other relations. Well, what does that mean? That means erase x0 whenever I see it. Then I can delete this relation, good, and then I can delete the generator. And there we go. And now we've made a simpler set of equations. Now none of these any longer, none of these relations any longer have the form generator equals something. But we can easily rearrange them until they do. And let's rearrange the one at the bottom here. So instead of having x1 minus 2x3 equals 0, let's have x1 equals 2x3. So generator equals right hand side. So now I can do the step again, the rule. I substitute the right hand side into all the other relations. So I substitute 2x3 for x1. So here's an x1, get rid of it, 2x3. Here's an x1, get rid of it and replace it with 2x3. So this is going to become minus 4x3. Uh, delete the relation, delete the generator. And then let's simplify as well here. Um, this is x2 minus 3x3. Okay, and let's keep going. Now let's use the bottom equation again to write x2 is equal to 3x3. There we are. So now this is of the form generator equals something. Let's substitute in the something for the generator. So we're going to substitute 3x3 whenever we see x2. Uh, so this is now minus 6x3. Uh, there we go, substituted it in, delete the relation, delete the generator. And uh, let's observe that the two equations, the first one says that minus 5x3 is 0, and the second one says that 5x3 is 0. So uh, since they're duplicates of each other, we can just erase one of them, and let's simplify this one, just as have 5x3 equals 0. Okay, so let me uh, tidy this up. Now, 
This is the abelian group generated by one symbol, x3, such that 5x3 equals 0. Well, that's isomorphic to the integers modulo 5z, as we claimed. So um, I didn't write down all the steps. I sort of uh, did it uh, by erasing and uh, simplifying on screen. Um, I recommend you go to the notes and have a go at example 2.4 for yourselves. That's the trefoil. Okay, that's the end of the lecture.